Hi there. Welcome to my kitchen on this Tuesday evening as we start to prepare some chicken. I have a, a bunch of chicken thighs that I am laying out and I am going to be uh, roasting. No, not in this uh, aluminum pan, in a cast iron pan. Uh, what I'm doing, in fact, is um, a recipe that I have uh, made, well, I guess I could say I thought it up myself and I'm quite proud of it. It's something that I call cast iron iron chicken in that this chicken is actually going to be pressed between two uh, smoking hot cast iron pans and then uh, roasted in the oven at 500 degrees. Um, I've uh, done this uh, quite a few times. I've made a couple of videos of this, including one that uh, happened uh, rather recently. However, isn't there always a however? Uh, some of the comments on those videos have uh, suggested that uh, the finished chicken is actually undercooked. That's because I've been uh, doing this. Uh, for, I only have to uh, cook it for, at uh, 500 degrees and between two cast iron pans for 20 minutes. And I know that some folks uh, don't think that you can completely cook chicken in 20 minutes. So that's what this video is for, to show, them, to show you. <laughs> Uh, in that, I'm going to uh, be doing this non-stop from the moment the um, chicken goes into the oven to the moment it comes out of the oven. So that I will demonstrate that what you get with this recipe is fully cooked chicken. I am just giving this a very simple coating of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and smoked paprika. Uh, if you make this recipe, you can, of course, use your favorite chicken uh, rub. This is going to be a very basic seasoning here on the chicken because I'm also going to be making a uh, gravy to go with the chicken. That's largely so that I'll have something to do here on camera <laughs> while the chicken is in the oven. And I figured that should only take about 20 minutes to do. Right now at the moment, I have two large cast iron pans heating up to 500 degrees in the oven, and they should be done any moment. Okay, that was salt, pepper, garlic powder. Don't need very much. A little bit here and a little bit there. Here we go. And finally, smoked paprika. I'll tell you, I almost rue the day I was introduced to smoked paprika because yes, those of you who are familiar with this particular condiment know that it can become something of an addiction. <laughs> Not just paprika, Hungarian style smoked paprika. All right, there we go. And then from here, we just coat the other side. And at that point, hopefully the oven will have uh, reached 500 degrees, which it should be doing again any moment. The only downside is that the stuff stains your hands. Well, I am going to wash my hands anyway, of course. So this is faster. And we'll do this. There we go. Uh, where did my paper towel go? There it is. Yeah, sorry. Just give the chicken a quick pat. Go. And now comes take two. Doing some simple salt. And as you can see, this is really so easy. Anybody can do this. I'm doing this on a Tuesday night, like I said, a work night. And I have to have this all finished in about the next 45 minutes because the work pager starts after that. So that's salt. 
pepper. And for me, there's no such thing as too much pepper. <laughs> Little by little. Come on. There we go. Salt, pepper, a little more garlic powder. Or as we say in New England, garlic powder. The old did it again. I watch myself on that. Oh well. And there it is. Yay, the oven is at 500 degrees. Just in time. All right, and finally, one more coating of this wonderful smoked paprika, which as you can see, I am being rather generous with it. Little by little, and then we have this, and that. go and we're ready all right just move these aside very quickly wash my hands try not to waste your time here as you sit and look at this prepared chicken and from there all I have to do now is get my gloves on and prepare two screaming hot cast iron pans. So, oh yeah, these are oven safe oven mitts. <laughs> because yeah, again, this is 500 degrees we're talking about. So, this side, let's move this to the side. And let's prepare a trivet for this. And having done that, let's get out the first pan. Ah, yes, here we are. Oh, yeah. Ah. Ah. Oh. You can hear it already. So, let's not waste any time and let's get started. One, two, hope there's enough room, three, four, I think there'll be just enough room. Five, six, and be tight. Seven, and eight. There we go. Good thing I'm doing this fast. And now for pen number two. Finally, to press it down. There we go. And now from here, let's quickly move the camera over to the oven. Because again, this is all going to be done in one single take. Two, 
621. So it's 641. The chicken will come out of the oven. 20 minutes, as I promise. So what do we do until then? Well, as I mentioned, we are going to do part two. And that is make some gravy. <laughs> because I figured this should only take about 20 minutes to do. especially since we're going to be making this gravy in a cast iron pan that I like to call lightning. A little bacon. Come on. Yeah. All right, um, the pans that are in the oven, I can actually turn this up I think. Pans that are in the oven, one of them, the bottom one, is actually a solid Technics made in Australia. They call it in a big skillet. That thing is 30 centimeters in diameter or a little bit more than 12 inches. That was made in Australia, like I said, in 2015. A couple of years later, solid Technics discontinued their cast iron production and switch instead to carbon steel and what they call, uh, I think they call it forged iron. As far as I know, they have not made that big skillet with their uh, newer production. The other pan that's sitting on top of that one is a Birmingham Skillet and Range number 10 size skillet. Or in other words, it's uh, about 12 and a half inches in diameter. So as you can see, those two pans fit each other nicely. I made sure to put the chicken skin side down so that it contacted the metal. And it's being pressed down by the BSR and by a WAPAC, a WAPAC, I never could pronounce that, sad iron. Meanwhile, we are cooking bacon here in another vintage Birmingham stove and range skillet. And this is a, uh, an older Red Mountain series skillet that seems to cook food at lightning speed. And that's one of the reasons why I nicknamed this pan Lightning. So here is hoping I can get this bacon done in time. Probably will if I don't just keep pushing it around like this. This is also what they call a handwritten BSR pan, meaning it's from what is believed to be among the first generation of Red Mountain pans from BSR, which means it dates to about the 1930s. Some have suggested it could be the 1920s but we don't have any written records to, to verify that. All I know is it's a really, really great kitchen user and I am quite happy to be using it. Anyway, once this bacon is cooked, of course, we will then get down to doing some gravy. At this point it is 625, so that chicken has only been in there for four minutes. So we're not doing too badly. Let's put a leather handle cover on this skillet. There we go. So that I can hold on to it. Oh uh, yeah, I suppose it could be argued that I that all I really needed to do was just to do the video showing bacon cooking. <laughs> uh, yeah, because bacon. What more do you need? 
Well, I love bacon. I love a lot of other things too. And I think the bacon fat is a little bit overrated. There, I said it. In that I like bacon. I like making things coated with bacon. I do not constantly make any bacon. I have not coated everything in the world with tons of bacon. <laughs> but pretty much like any other food, bacon is great in moderation. Of course, that's like the old joke. I drink in moderation. Moderation is a nickname for the place where I am right now. There we go, this thing is rendering pretty nicely. Looks like only a couple more minutes. So I'm still hoping this gravy should be done, I hope. Just around the time the chicken is ready. I'm just debating whether I should use chicken stock or milk to make this gravy. I'll figure it out. Because, yeah, as you can see, as, even though I did do all my preparations in advance, I forgot a couple of things. I will decide... Well, I'm kind of leaning more and more towards using chicken broth. Because, well, it's chicken. So that should make a decent gravy. Besides, arguably, if this gravy is not done when the chicken is, and I could always mix in the pan juices, too. So that's not a bad thing, either. And anyway, we are getting close to the point of this uh, bacon being done. So far, it's 628, which means it's been a total of seven minutes. This bacon has been in the pan for, I don't know, six minutes. And that's why I like to call this skillet lightning. This particular pan also has some interesting markings on the bottom. They call them casting flaws. Basically, that's where, even though the bottom of this pan is good and smooth and definitely not cracked, there are a couple of little wrinkles, I guess you could call them, or they call it sand shift, where, which look like, they initially they look like cracks, but they are not. As you can see, I'm cooking just fine. But you could also say they look like bolts of lightning, which is, yes, that's another reason why I call this pan lightning. Well, this bacon is definitely at the right point now, so instead of talking, let's throw some fat into the pan, shall we? And that is clarified butter. I had already melted that clarified butter and hardened it again in the fridge because I don't want anything to go to waste. There we go. And while I'm waiting here, I guess I will get out my chicken stuff. There's enough. There may not be enough here for that. All right. Well, if I don't have enough, I may actually have to use a little milk after all. But nonetheless, now that we have this, and we are now at 6.30, so it has been nine minutes. The chicken has 11 minutes to go. That should be enough. Now we just cook this around a little bit to get rid of the floury flavor. 
And at the same time, we want to keep stirring it like a roux because we don't want to burn it. But yeah, actually we are making a roux. Basically, when this changes from a um, white roux to at least a blonde roux, which it looks like we're already at, at that point now, we'll be ready to start adding some liquid. Now at this point, in fact, I think it could turn down the heat a little on this pan. All right, there we go. Now let's see what happens. Let me add a little bit of this chicken stock. There we go. Off to a good start. Took me a while to remember that the first time you add liquid to your roux, it actually solidifies, at least partially. So you really don't have to use too much flour. In fact, I hope I didn't use too much flour. I think we'll be okay. Put on a little bit more. We're at 6.32, nine minutes to go. Yeah, there we go. Definitely reaching the point of a roux. Now I just have to keep adding liquid to thin it out. container here has chicken broth rather than stock. Alright, what I should be using is this. There we go. Trying to look good. And the thing about cast iron is, of course, is that <clears throat> it's really easy for your gravy to be too thick. So, that's one container. Yeah, this is looking pretty good already. And we now are at 6.34, so that is seven minutes to go. Chances are, when that chicken comes out, this will still be too thick. And if just before I serve the gravy, I'll probably have to add yet a little bit more liquid. Yeah. Be patient. Besides, whoever said there's such a thing as too much gravy? All right. Since there's bacon in here, that means there's more than enough salt. On the other hand, I can definitely add a little bit of pepper. This is what I mean about it being too thick. As I said, <clears throat> I'll probably give it one more bit of liquid before finally serving it. 
All right, stop looking at the clock. You know what they say about a washed pot never boiling. <laughs> Even though we now have five minutes to go. That's good. I was worried that this wouldn't be finished in time, but I'd say we are doing just fine here. There's a little bit more yet. In fact, I could probably even turn off the heat because this gravy is definitely not going to go cold. Not in a cast iron pan. There we go. Hope you've enjoyed this so far, folks. After all, you have seen cast iron, you've seen chicken, and you've seen bacon. <laughs> what more is there? Well, there's more when the chicken actually comes out of the oven. Yeah, so I mean, this is, this is not looking too badly right now. As I said, I will give it one more bit of liquid before actually serving the gravy. All right, which means it's only a matter of waiting about a little less than four minutes now. <laughs> I talked about this pan being a Red Mountain pan, the bottom pan being a uh, Solid Technics pan. The top one I didn't mention much about. That is uh, a Birmingham Stove and Range number 10, as I said. That one is actually from their Century Cookware series, which was produced likely in the late 1970s to, well, mid 1970s to the 1980s because that pan does have other markings that do suggest it was made in that particular period. That's how I can date it relatively accurately. That number 10 pan was a flea market find, $20. I don't regret a penny of it. And it's just more proof that even now, those of you who are on the cast iron treasure hunt it is, there are still bargains out there to be found. There probably will be for a long time yet. Simply because there's so much cast iron out there. And that's another reason why I am not worried about carbon steel replacing cast iron. When it gets to the point where you can find carbon steel pans by the boatload at flea markets, antique malls, yard sales, junkyards, and so on all over the country, and pay next to nothing for them, then I'll start to worry about cast iron becoming obsolete. In other words, I don't expect that to be happening anytime soon. <laughs> Down to two minutes. Sorry if I'm making you tired of hearing that, but I am, again, determined to demonstrate yes, you can cook chicken in 20 minutes. At least in this manner. I have several methods for cooking chicken. This is one of them. <laughs> I can't say it's my favorite because I'm very fond of the other methods I have for cooking chicken but I really enjoy doing this. Especially, again, when I'm pressed for time. Like on a night like this. All right, we are down to one minute to go here, which means I better start clearing off my workspace. And that means, okay, this is turned off. So let's move back over here one more time. Got a good view. There we go. Thank you for your patience. Let's also turn the light over. Because we're getting down to the last few seconds. 
All right, that means here we go. Once again, uh, let's put on the gloves. And away we go. Carefully, that is. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Careful and oh, yeah, Ugh. did it. <laughs> Close the oven and turn off the heat. There we go. Now let's move this hot iron and put it on the stove. Now, as they say, for the moment of truth or the reveal. <laughs> and voila! And remember, this chicken was done skin side down, too. So let's move this hot pan over, shall we? And, one, oh yeah, one other thing I should do, I think. <laughs> Always forget something, folks, in this case. Plates. There we go. Move this. Um, yeah, you too. Okay. And now we'll move this pan up to the side for the time being. And There we go. Serve ourselves some chicken. Here we are. One, two. Hmm. A lot of grease this time. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. Now, one last bit of evidence. We'll wait maybe about a minute or so and hit these with a thermometer. That way I will demonstrate that the chicken is done. Because right now, if I use a thermometer, all right, there we go. Let's see what we have right now. Actually, I should probably hold this down. Let me get those tongues one more time. <clears throat> Let's see what we have, shall we? Well, look at this. It looks like this one is already shooting up to 190 degrees, which is good because this is dark meat. And here's another one that says 192. This one here, and I'm not, and deliberately, I'm not touching the bones. Look at that. Also says about 190. And this one even says 198. We got just put the lock on to show you folks that yes, you can cook chicken in 20 minutes in cast iron. And this is hardly the only way to do so, but it's a lot of fun, <laughs> especially if you have more than one large cast iron pan. <laughs> All right. So, the last thing I need to do now is once again add a little bit more liquid to the gravy as I expected. There we go. And it looks like it was just enough, too. And so it lasts. 
we do, let's quickly do this. And we will be ready. Here is lightning. And here is some bacon gravy. So there we are. <laughs> and this whole thing, as you saw, including the prep work, was done in about 30 minutes. Although, to be fair, it did take almost 30 minutes to heat up these two big cast iron pans to 500 degrees. But nonetheless, it's done. Plenty of time before the pager starts. And here is our chicken and gravy. <laughs> and this is a recipe that I call cast iron iron chicken. It's done, I deliberately use the word iron twice because, well, it's made with a cast iron iron. We use two cast iron pans, plus we use a cast iron sad iron to press down the chicken. It's a take up on chicken under a brick, except instead of a brick, as you can see, we are using another hot cast iron pan. And personally, I think the results are superior to a brick. I hope you enjoy this, folks. And yes, I would be very, very flattered if you gave this a try because as I said, it's a lot of fun. That's the most important thing. Well, no, the most important thing is that this is delicious. I mean, no, I haven't had any yet, but I've made this enough times to know that this is delicious. <laughs> so here's hoping you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Please feel, free, please feel free to comment, and you know the routine, like, subscribe, share, etc. And above all else, have fun cooking. Thank you very much and have a good evening.